What's going on guys? Shane aka Musty Eddie here. Today is going to be uh, part two in the series where we paint my AR-15 with just your standard uh, over-the-counter spray paint from your hardware store. Now if you guys missed the first video, we discussed how to best clean and prep your gun uh, so when you do apply your paint, you have the best chance of it really sticking and lasting quite a while. So if you guys missed it, I'll annotate it in one of the corners up here. Click on that if you want to check out how I cleaned uh, my rifle uh, for this step. In today's video, part two, we're going to be actually showing you how and why um, I masked my rifle and then actually show you the process of painting and then uh, after that we're going to be applying the battle-worn appearance and hope it works. If you guys, like I said, missed the first video, we're going with this you know, typical over-the-counter from your hardware store, rust -Oleum. It's kind of like a Noveski bazooka green, I guess. Uh, we're going to be doing that and then applying some rust -Oleum black um, and then doing some st stripping away to give it that battle-worn appearance. Um, before we get down to the actual garage where we are going to start the painting process, I wanted to get on the table over here and show you guys uh, what I taped off and explain why and also some things I learned from the cleaning process that I really think you guys need to know if you're going to be using uh, simple green like I did. Um, so let's not waste any time. Let's get on the table, discuss some stuff, and then get right down in my garage and start this painting. Alright guys, so here's everything that we're going to be painting today later on in the garage. Uh, first let's start off with the rail. So this is just a Strike Industries 15 inch rail that I have here. Obviously you can see it's an M-Lock. Uh, me personally, I don't like it when uh, the inside of the rail is the same color as the outside. I don't know, it's a preference thing. And also I've noticed with spray paint when you do do that uh, without taping the in, uh, interior of it, that spray doesn't really fully cover the inside so you can definitely tell it's uh, spray paint. So I have all rolling pictures and close-ups and everything so you guys can see this. But I have the, um, the whole thing from front to back uh, taped on the inside to... Um, cover any paint going in there. Hopefully this thing focuses on autofocus. Along with that I have all of the mounting holes and uh, screws here, screw holes um, covered up. At the top of the uh, Strike Industries, this specific rail, there's these four at the top, two at the top, uh, two at the bottom, four total screws that secure uh, the uh, rail to your, is it focusing, to your upper and lower receiver. Hopefully it is. Uh, so I've gone ahead and covered those as well. And the rail also has uh, these little accent marks here that have, I believe it's a Strike Industries, I can't remember now. I think it's a Strike Industries. Ooh, I don't remember. Either way, there's something here that I liked and I wanted to keep. And also the M-Lock logo. So what I'm hoping to do here and I'm planning on doing here is to paint everything green and then remove these and then when I do the battle worn these won't be like fresh black circles they'll have some you know damage and battle worn to them uh, along with that I also uh, completely cover the M-Lock uh, or the Picatinny section at the top here uh, so for two reasons I like the black straight black uh, Picatinny rail with a different colored uh, hand guard I like that look and also I don't want to mess with uh, the dimensions between the pick slots or anything, so I'll have trouble mounting stuff as well. I think that's about it. Uh, if you guys know the Strike Industries rail, it comes with a built-in front sight post, so I have the front of this also covered, so no uh, paint gets in the mechanism there. And I think that's it. This is all kind of personal preference. Most of the time you see people spray paint on uh, YouTube, they tend to leave it assembled. I really want all of my, uh, you know, take down a pivot pin, safeties, mag magazine release that are black to really pop on the green paint. So I took everything apart. Uh, so what's gonna be really nice about the Strike Industries rail is when I do that battle worn, that all of these little, you can't probably see my camera, these nooks and crannies will be full of dark paint and really give it a good appearance. Uh, let's put this off the side. I'm trying not to touch it guys. Remember if you're doing this painting process we talked about in the first video, you really don't wanna touch anything with your bare hands. There's no point in cleaning the uh, gunk and the grease and the gun oil and stuff off of your gun just to put finger uh, finger oil and you know stuff on there so uh, either wear gloves or just wash your hands religiously I just washed my hands so I think I'm gonna be okay um, now for the upper and lower so I went a little overboard here um, there's pretty much no way paints can get to the interior of this upper and lower receiver um, so I have some extra take down and pivot pins in to hold it together. I have my threading covered. I went ahead and stuffed some tape in the end there so no tape gets in there. 
I covered the ejection port. I even covered the top and bottom pinholes that hold your you know, forward assist. I plugged that hole there. I uh, covered the threading with tape, then I jammed uh, more tape inside so no paint got in there. Even some in the uh, charging handle, I guess, port, you could say there. I even taped in the uh, slot for your um, detent spring when you put the end plate on. Um, I even got uh, t tape on the inside where the detent goes in here and also where the hole is in there. So I have everything, oh, even on this side. So I even have tape on the uh, <clears throat> uh, bolt hold open, bolt release. You can see I've got it on every single, hopefully it's focused. I got pictures again um, on both sides, all of uh, the holes, safety, everything. So even down here, the trigger guard is covered. Uh, the... Uh, I, if you guys have noticed when you build ARs that sometimes the grips going on here can be really difficult because the tolerances are so tight. So I covered that up because I don't want to deal with even, you know, the smallest amount of paint messing up uh, or making it harder to install a pistol grip. And then lastly, I also did um, the top Picatinny rail, same reasons as before. And I also did, lastly, I think, is the uh, hole for your gas tube. Um, I think that's about everything. Again, you can... Uh, take this as far as you want. I will say guys, this is a fact that your paint job is only going to look as good as the tape job you do. So if you really do a shoddy job at taping, you know, there's going to get overspraying areas or you won't have any clean lines. I really took my time to make sure the tape was recessed in the, under the Picatinny slot. If you're doing a camo job, that's especially true. You really want to take your time. You want to get everything masked off properly press it down, and then you'll be good to go. But I've taped pretty much everything as well as um, I could have. The camera's backwards here, so my brain's got to figure out how to go with this thing like this. Good enough. Okay, and then uh, now to talk about um, my learning experiences from painting, uh, or from cleaning. Sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. So you guys, uh, I'm going to be honest. Normally I have no patience. And that's why I've never really done something like this before is because I cannot wait proper amount of time. I just hurry and get things done and ends up being a really crappy uh, end result. So I want to do it right this time. And I thought I was doing the right thing and I let everything soak in simple green for you know almost 24 hours, a one to one ratio. So you know half simple green, half water. And I thought simple green was kind of a gentle agent that cleans. That stuff is no joke. Um, it didn't, luckily, it didn't damage any of um, my upper lower receiver or the rail. And it almost did a number on my Rainier uh, arms here, muzzle device. But, uh, 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 up here, um, but the Simple Green, absolutely, I thought it, it, it destroyed um, my bulk hair group. I'll roll in some video. You guys can see that it absolutely ate away uh, a lot of the finish of the uh, bolt care group and because obviously it ate away the finish then bare metal was exposed because there's water in the simple green uh, mixture uh, solution that water made rust form and I was fully prepared to buy a new bolt carrier group um, but uh, as you guys can see I'll try to hopefully it zooms in and focuses if it doesn't I'll roll in some b-roll I used uh, is it still out and about dang it I use that Strike Industries Anti-Venom XPLC, and you guys can see it absolutely positively saved this bulk carrier group. Um, I, like I said, I thought it was going to be ruined. I thought it was, there's no way, no way it was coming back to life. Uh, but uh, obviously these channels here that were full of rust are now uh, looking just fine. There was massive rust in here, and now that's fine. Um, so one more time with that Strike Industries Anti-Venom Oil really shocked me and it saved my bulk care group and saved me from having to spend you know a hundred something bucks on a bulk care group so lesson learned here is either don't well either way don't let things soak for 24 hours uh don't do the one-to-one -one solution maybe do a one to ten like it recommends for the lower uh strength um simple green and then just put things in there and scrub them down and take them out you don't need to let them soak so uh, learn from my mistake there and uh, you should be just fine to uh, continue to this step here. So we gave this thing, uh, I blew it out with my air compressor, then I gave it another full day to dry before applying the tape. Uh, now we're going to be doing 
uh, the paint downstairs. So just, you guys saw the Rust-Oleum paint before, but we'll show it again just to make sure. I'll grab it here. So you have, again, this uh, bazooka green that we're gonna do the main coat on, and then we're gonna do the battle worn with this black camouflage from Rust-Oleum. Um, also, you're gonna wanna do uh, gloves because you again don't want to touch your rifle and get your dirty greasy hand prints fingerprints all over that thing and I think that's about it I do have something uh, it's either really ghetto or pretty ingenious I'm not sure which one but we have something downstairs I'm gonna show you guys and you can be the judge on what it, what it is either ghetto or ingenious but let's get the camera downstairs and uh, get to the actual painting process Alright guys, so we're down in my garage. Hopefully the audio sounds okay because I didn't bring my equipment down here with me. Uh, but this is my ghetto paint booth. I'll roll in some pictures so you guys can see what I did there. I simply just took a, um, a tote, a storage bin. I cut out the bottom. I got an air filter. Uh, sealed it completely around the air filter. And we have a box down on the other side. Um, I'll try to get a video, but it really actually uh, has a decent amount of airflow sucking in. That's going to help with the fumes. So if you guys aren't in an actual paint booth, you um, can't make this. Make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. You might even want to wear some sort of mask, a respiratory something to help out with that. But I really do think this is going to work. I've seen it online. Hopefully it works out pretty well. Uh, I lost the table, so we just got TV trays, and I think that's about it. So I'm not going to talk over this whole uh, time that I paint. I'll probably just do a, uh, a quick uh, speed up of the whole thing so you guys can see it being done. But uh, I read with rust you need to do a... Uh, a fresh coat every before within one hour or after 24 hours so you want to make sure you time it to do multiple coats remember guys light coats are better than thicker coats you want to do several light coats instead of one big thick uh, coat of paint so I'm going to stop talking I'm just going to start painting <laughs> So we're back for the second coat. Unfortunately, my camera's SD card uh, failed to capture the rail getting painted for the first coat. So that's been done. Nothing to miss really uh, there. But um, let me get autofocus on and get this thing to zoom in here. So as you guys can see, the first coat went on uh, pretty clear. I rewatched the video and it did look like um, perhaps... Uh, they were like, it looked like it was really heavy coats, but they weren't. They were really light. I was pretty far away. That's why I had to do so many passes because those coats uh, were so thin. So we're going to go ahead and roll on and do a second coat. That's all we're going to do. Uh, it's been about 50 minutes since the last coat I read. You're supposed to do it within uh, one hour or after 48 hours. So we're within one hour um, and then we're going to do a second coat. We're going to let it sit for 48 hours and then do the battle worn. So let's uh, finish this thing up. guys so it's now been roughly 48 hours or more we're back in the garage and if you guys follow me on Instagram you know I posted a picture of a rail already painted just to get your guys input and I decided to do a little test spray before I brought the actual parts in here to to spray and uh, this is what we're kind of looking at here 
Um, it's not great, but it's not horrible at the same time. Um, I definitely think I'm gonna, this was like one big, thick, heavy coat, and then I wiped it off. I think I'm gonna do lighter coats, because it definitely has that battle-worn look, um, but I think thicker coats, it doesn't come off as easy. So we'll just mist it on, and uh, you can always add more, but it's harder to take it off. So uh, we'll see what happens here, but this is a little test print. Again, not horrible, but not exactly what I was looking for, but um, yeah, let's get the parts in here, and then we'll get started. Okay, so before I get started, I should say that this, uh, you know, system I'm using worked really, really well for the actual painting of the green. But when it comes time to actually paint the black and strip it off, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because I have to use one hand to hold this thing. So I recommend if you guys can hang this from a wire or something so you can get, uh, you know, both hands on this thing when you do this, this job. So uh, what we're pretty much going to do, like I said before, we're going to spray uh, the black rust -Oleum on this thing. I just took an old t-shirt and cut it up into pieces that I'm gonna have it not dripping wet, but it's gonna be soaking in um, you know, some water and some alcohol to help strip the paint off. So we're gonna do light coats and see what happens here, so uh, wish me luck. So this side definitely turned out uh, a bit better. Let's see it'll focus. See it's in the dark grooves and stuff. Uh, I'm not super pumped with how it turned out, but again, it's not horrible. Uh, just remember, like what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get some paint remover. I'm gonna thin out the paint in this area and leave it thicker on the edges. So uh, we're committed now. Let's go ahead and do the upper and lower.
All right, guys, that's it. And I am digging the look of this thing. I'm still gonna hit this thing with some sandpaper to uh, bring out the green underneath the black in some areas and get the highlights where you'd normally wear normally from wear and tear to make that green. But I'm digging this thing. It looks dirty and beat up and battle-worn and I love it. So let's, um, let's head upstairs and we'll start taking some tape off and then put this scene together. All right, guys, so we're back up here in the office. We're on our desk and we have our lower, our upper, and our rail. Now it's gonna be the tedious process of removing all of the tape from all the parts. It's gonna be a pretty boring watch, so I'm not gonna show you the whole thing. Um, it's just removing tape. Um, after that, we're gonna get back into it with some really high grit sandpaper and maybe that same scuff pad we used before to you know, maybe remove some black in areas where we wanna see more green and just get uh, a better battle-worn look so only the blacks and the nooks and crannies of this thing. So um, hang tight guys, we're gonna remove all, this, remove all the tape and then we'll come back and start the sanding process and hopefully get a really good finished product here. All right, guys, so we got all the tape off of everything, and I liked it before, but I absolutely freaking love this now. I don't know what it is, but something about just these little markers here and that black, solid black Picatinny rail section on this distressed, you know, bazooka green paint, I am in love with. Uh, now we're just gonna do, like I said, take that scuff pad, and let's just grab a spot and try it out. So let's take this part right here, see if it'll focus, you guys can see. Um, how solid black it is. Let's hit it with this scuff pad and let's see. We don't want to get crazy here. We just want to Ooh, Ooh, yeah. Yep. 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 We're in business boys. We want to try to get those uh, Corners You know green where your hand would would rest. You know, I'm just gonna keep going since we're since we're here and we're recording And I literally just got done painting this thing. I want to try to get this black off while um, it's still kind of partially wet and I know the green is for sure dry. I don't know if that's the right thing to do but um, but we're doing it. And you know I, I might even come back in here and add some more. What's nice about this is you really can't I don't think screw it up. I mean if it like I said if it starts chipping or, or anything like that you know you're you're just making the rifle, the, the paint job, look even better. Because if it's distressed, it's going to have those chip marks and stuff in it already. We're just going to get those highlights to pop here. Which it seems to be working. I'll come back and I'll show you that, that one spot. So yeah, look, this is that spot we, did, uh, we showed earlier. All the focuses, and you can see how much lighter it is now. And now we have these accent marks where, you know, on the high points where your hand would touch it. So we're going to uh, we're going to keep working on this thing. Uh, we're going to do the whole rifle, the upper, the lower, and we'll come back and show this thing off when it's all said and done.
All right, guys, we're almost there. We're pretty much done. I didn't use any sandpaper at all. I just used the same scuff pad I used before, that only. And I've uh, hit up all the high spots and stuff. Hopefully you can see here in a focus um, that I went ahead and hit all of these edges here. So where, you know, average wear and tear would hit, the high points, I did that even up here. I try to get the high points. Um, I try to do this a little bit. I don't want, want to do too much. I don't want too much away from this thing. I even did the little high spots in the back here. Um, I really focused on the part where the shells, the shell deflector, where it hit there. I scuffed that up. All these little edges here. Um, this this thing is looking absolutely amazing. I'm loving this thing. I can't believe you can get this out of spray paint. Uh, but that's gonna wrap it up for uh, today's episode. I guess I'll show you. I'll show you this one real quick. All right, and here is the rail. Uh, same thing. It's pretty much um, all said and done. All those high points are hit. I think I'm gonna come back in. Now you may be able to see it, but I've kind of got where every little circle around the end lock is highlighted, where you know something might have gone in there and worn down the dirt. Um, but I think that's all we're gonna do for today. I might work on this a little bit more off camera, but uh, I think that about wraps up for part two, guys. You're gonna have to stick around. In part three, we're gonna have this thing completely assembled. I'm going to show you the final look of this thing and we're going to discuss what I learned uh, through this process and maybe what you guys can take from it to get even a better result. So we'll see you guys in part three for hopefully a fully assembled AR and some tips and tricks. If you guys uh, like the video, I would really appreciate you hitting the like button down below. Uh, this video took a lot of work, uh, not only just prepping these parts, but getting the camera around and doing stuff like that. So if you could, I'd appreciate the support if you hit the like button. If you guys haven't, feel free to subscribe. I'm going to try to start kicking out a lot more YouTube videos. I got a uh, partnership coming up that you guys won't want to miss. It's got a discount and some free stuff for you, so stay tuned for that. Subscribe, hit that notification bell if you want to make sure you don't miss those videos. But yeah, guys, we'll see you in part three. When that video comes up, it'll be... Um, in the card up here so you guys can check that out. But as usual, guys, take care, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.